it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this gorgeous strawberry cream peplum tank. This is done with some lighter weight yarn, so it's a nice little top for warm weather, or when it gets cooler outside, you could definitely wear this with some long sleeves underneath. We are going to learn how to crochet this tube bodice part. We're going to learn how to add some straps to our tank top, and then we are going to add these gorgeous ruffles that are easy to make but just really have an impact uh, for the top. So we're going to go through this every step of the way. As we go through our tutorial, I will show you how to customize every part of this, whether you want to make this longer, have a larger or smaller circumference, uh, how to change the straps. Uh, length of your tank top and also how to elongate it if you want it to be the bodice to be longer or the ruffles to be longer it's very customizable you can change it however you want however um, I know a lot of you like to have measurements of the one I show so the circumference of the tube shown here is 35 inches this height of this plain part before we get to the ruffles is 7 inches the ruffles are five inches from start to finish. So the total of the tank top, not including the straps, from, but from here to the bottom is 12 inches. And then our straps are each 11 inches from where they begin here and go around to the back. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle. You'll need some stitch markers, removable ones that uh, we'll be using for the placement of the straps of our tank. You'll need a tape measure uh, to measure as you go along, if you need to measure um, yourself or your piece as you're working on it. We're gonna be using a five millimeter H crochet hook. Um, this is my Furls Odyssey in the Navy. I'll put the link down below in a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. And then this beautiful yarn that we're gonna be using, I'm just gonna scoot everything over here, is this lovely yarn from Global Backyard. And this is their uh, sock weight yarn. It's a superwash wool, um, and it's the cherry blossom colorway. So it's a very soft sock yarn in just a very subtle tonal um, gradient. And each one of these is 437 yards. So we're going to be using 874 yards of this. Now, you will need to wind this into a cake or a ball. So uh, when we get started, I'll have mine wound already, but if you um, use skeins like this, you'll have to wind them yourself. So this is also hand dyed. It's really beautiful yarn, and, and again, it's super soft. And Global Backyard is a wonderful uh, company, small business. I'll put the link down below too if you'd like to get some of this yarn for yourself as well. So I have my yarn and my hook and we're ready to go. Now, as a side note, I wound the skein that you saw earlier in the video, I wound those into cakes. So they're center pull cakes. If you don't have a ball winder and a swift, you can easily just wind it into a ball. Okay, so we're gonna grab our yarn. And I also wanted to mention to maybe have your tape measure handy because we're gonna take a measurement and know how to do the chains. So you might wanna have this handy. So I have my hook. And we're going to start by doing our chain. Now the chain length will be the circumference of the tube. So we're going to create a tube first in the round. And then we're going to add the little peplum ruffle to the bottom. And we'll add the straps last. So I found that measuring the widest part of the bust, um, either whoever you're making this for, yourself or someone else, measure the widest part of the bust so that it will fit comfortably around them. You don't want it to be so tight that it's not comfortable um, and it will pull the stitches and make them distorted. Uh, but you don't want it to be so loose that it's like sagging down, okay? So just a nice um, snug but not tight fit around the widest part of the bust, okay? And it will have quite a bit of stretch so it will kind of work with the body while you're um, wearing it as well. So what we're gonna do is our starting chain. Now I measured, um, I uh, go by my dress form because that's how I photograph my pieces, but m uh, the dress form bust that I'm fitting mine to is 35 inches around. So I'm gonna do my starting chain of 35 inches. So that's why I said to keep this handy, would it would make it handy. If you don't have a tape measure or just gonna kind of like make a chain and wrap it around yourself, you could easily do that too. It's totally up to you. So we're gonna do our starting chain first. I'm gonna zoom way in so you can see here. And what we're gonna do first is put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. 
bring the arm behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop, and tighten. Now we're going to just start making a chain until it's as long as we would like it to be. So I'm gonna um, show you how to make a chain if you're not familiar. Wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop and then just start making chains. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so forth. And we're gonna measure as we go along. So I ended up working about 150 chains to get me to that 35 inch long chain, okay? Now, with your personal tension that you use on your hook, your hook size and your yarn that you've chosen, you may need a different number of chains to get to the size that you need. So just, you know, keep that in mind. The next thing we're gonna do is join our chain to create a large ring so we can start working in the round. Now, we want to be careful not to twist our yarn. So what I do, it's kind of a foolproof way of doing that, and it's super easy, is the front of your chain looks like V's. So if you look at the front of your chain here, it looks like a bunch of little V's. Now, if you flip it over, the back of your chain is going to look like sort of like a chain link fence. So flip it to the V's, and then what you're going to do is take your thumb and just run it along the front without letting go, run it along the front of those V's. And anytime you, it flips over, see I'm not letting go with my left hand, anytime it, it flips over, you just wanna gently untwist it. But you wanna just hold on to the front of that chain without letting go. And that's how you're gonna, we're gonna join it without, now I had to twist it around a little bit because it's getting a little twisty here and you can sort of hold it with your other hand while you untwist it. Um, but you wanna just run your finger down the chain. Now, if you twist it, you'll make like a, um, like a Mobius, which is like a figure eight twist, which would be very difficult to wear. That might be fun for like a cowl or something like that. But for a, our little tank top, it's that shape wouldn't work. So we wanna make sure we are very careful not to twist our chain. Now I'm coming down to the bottom here and here is our very last chain. Now, even if I drop it now, it's gonna, everything's gonna be um, properly aligned, okay? Now, what we wanna do now is join with a slip stitch in that, that very last chain to connect and create our ring. So insert your hook into that chain the best you can. This is very fine yarn, so you wanna just kinda of take your time here. But make sure you catch two loops on that, okay? Now, take your working yarn, which there it is back here. We're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through that chain. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on our hook. And now we're ready to start working in the round. This uh, tail. We don't need to worry about that right now. We'll just not worry about that right now. <laughs> we'll weave that in later. Okay, so to begin, we're going to be doing a half double crochet stitch. So the half double crochet stitch gives us a little bit of drape, but it also gives us um, some solidity. So it's not, it doesn't have a bunch of decorative holes because it is a top that we'll be wearing. So what we want to do is chain two to begin. And then in the first chain and in every chain around our piece, we're going to work a half double crochet. So to make a half double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that first chain, wrap the yarn around the hook again and bring up a loop. Now you're gonna have three loops on the hook, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through all three loops. And that's it. So we're just gonna do that in every chain all the way around our big loop here, okay, just to get started. So just work half double crochet in the next chain, half double crochet in the next chain, and so forth. So I'm gonna continue working my half doubles around. When we rejoin, we're gonna learn how to work round two, which is very similar to round one, but we're gonna be working in stitches instead of chains this time. So continue around with your half double crochets and we'll rejoin almost to the end of the round. Okay, we worked our half double crochets all the way around and I'm just working that last stitch of the last chain here. And then what we're gonna do is, remember we did that chain two at the beginning of the round? We're gonna count two chains up and join with a slip stitch. 
So insert the hook into that second chain up, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on the hook. Okay, so round one is complete. Now I like to do a quick check at this point before we move along too far, you might wanna slip it on, take another measurement, and also make sure that your little band that you're starting to create is not twisted, okay? So we're in good shape, we can keep going. For round two, this is the round you're gonna repeat for the rest of the tube part of your top. Um, we're going to chain two. And then we're going to work a half double crochet into that first stitch. So locate the spot, not where you join, but that first half double crochet you worked up the round in that little loop at the top is the stitch. So work a half double crochet into that first stitch and then work a half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. And this is how you're gonna do the whole tube. So you're just gonna be repeating row two. So we're just gonna work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Okay, I'm just going on to each stitch here. And so we're gonna do this all the way around. So when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to finish up round two, and then you'll know what to do for the rest of your tube. Just working that last stitch of round two. And then we're gonna join with a slip stitch in that second chain up to close the round. So insert the hook into that second chain up, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. So now we have a lovely tube, round two is complete. Now to finish our, the tube part of our tank, we're gonna keep working round two over and over and over again. So if you need to back up the video and watch round two again, feel free to do that. But we're just gonna keep working round two over and over until our tube is as tall as we would like it to be. Now, before you go any farther, you might wanna just sl like slip it on or the person that you're making it for, if you're making it for someone else or yourself, just slip it on and just make sure that it's not too tight. Um, so we're gonna re be repeating row two and our tube is gonna grow in height. Now we will be adding a ruffled kind of peplum ruffle to the bottom. So it doesn't need to completely like come all the way down to the hips or the bottom of the midsection. Um, so we're gonna just keep going and you, you can kind of make this section as tall as you would like it to be. I'm gonna keep going with my round two and when we come back, I'm gonna give you some exact measurements and um, you'll have a, a good idea of where to go. Now, you could make your tube taller if you want and make the peplum or the ruffle kind of hit at the hip as well. It's kind of flexible in that regard. So just keep repeating round two and we're gonna rejoin in just a minute and I'll give you some measurements and we'll move on to the ruffly bottom part of our tank next. Okay, we're just coming up to the end of the last round of our tube part of our tank top and we're just gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round, same thing we've been doing. So I'm gonna give you some measurements next. Let's get this all laid out. Okay, so here is our tube. Again, your starting chain will determine the circumference, but you want it to comfortably fit around the bust, um, snugly, not tight, and not droopy so that it's like drooping down. The next thing we're gonna do is start to add this fun, roughly bottom, and we're gonna change up the stitch we're doing a little bit too. Okay, I went back to my stitch where I left off one and I'm gonna zoom way in so you can see what I'm doing here. Now we're gonna, we, we've done half double crochet so far and when we do the straps later on, we'll go back to this half double crochet stitch so there's some kind of like continuity with the tube and the straps. But the bottom part, we're gonna change it up a little bit and do a treble crochet. And that will give us um, a lot of nice length and a little bit of a different uh, texture uh, visually. Okay, so our starting chain for our peplum round. So once you've made it as tall as you would like it to be, we're gonna to switch to the roughly bottom. So to do that, you're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four. And then in each stitch all the way around, you're gonna put two treble crochets in each stitch. We're gonna be kind of smooshing some stitches in there. We're gonna be doubling up the stitches. And what will happen is when you get some crowding of stitches, it gives, um, like a ruffled effect, okay? So we did a chain four, and now in this first stitch here, we're gonna work two treble crochets. So to make a treble crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook two times, insert it into that first stitch, bring up a loop, now wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. 
And then we're going to do one more in that seam stitch, just like that. Whoops, I only wrapped once. So wrap two times, <laughs> unlike what I did. Insert it into that seam stitch, bring up a loop, yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring through the next two loops, yarn around hook, bring through the last two loops. And you can see just how much taller that stitch is than this. And it looks a little bit different visually, which I think is a lot of fun. So we're just gonna do this all the way around, two treble crochets in each stitch all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this round and then when we return, we're gonna finish up this round and so you'll know how to do the entire thing, okay? So go ahead and do two treble crochets in each stitch all the way around and we'll rejoin in just a minute. Okay, just working the very last treble crochet of our round here. And then what we're gonna do is in that fourth chain up, remember that chain four we did at the beginning of the round? We're gonna count four chains up, one, two, three, four, and join with a slip stitch to close the round. So insert the hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Okay, so for round two of our, our peplum bottom, we're going to do almost the same thing. It's just two rounds. So we have this round one of our peplum where we did two treble crochets in each stitch. Okay, so for round two of our peplum ruffle at the bottom of our tank top, we're going to just work one treble crochet in each stitch. And then for the remainder of our top, or the bottom of our top, <laughs> if you will, uh, we're gonna just do rounds one and two, one and two, one and two. So you'll work two treble crochets in each stitch for round one, and then one treble crochet in each stitch for round two. And then just alternate those until you get the length that you want. So let's get started on round two. For that one, for round two, we're gonna chain four once again, one, two, three, and four, and then we're gonna work just one treble crochet in each stitch for this round, okay? So one treble crochet in that first stitch, one treble crochet in the next stitch, and so forth. So keep going, working one treble crochet in each stitch for this round, and then when we get towards the end of this round, once again, we're going to rejoin, finish up round two, and then you'll be able to complete the bottom of your tank top. So keep going, working one treble crochet in each stitch. So to close the round, just count one, two, three, four chains up like we did before, and join with the slip stitch. Insert the hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. All right, now let's look. I'm gonna move my hook for a minute. Let's look at what we have so far. So far we have our tube that we created earlier, and I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see. And now we're starting to get a lovely little ruffle. So what you wanna do is for the rest of your top, now I'm gonna take this, so this was the, the tube that kind of uh, goes around the bust area, and then from here down um, till roughly the waist area, it might be different lengths uh, depending on um, how long you need to take it. But I'm gonna keep repeating rounds one and two of the peplum bottom until it's about waist length, the entire top, okay? So remember, just to recap, round one, we did two treble crochets in each stitch. Round two, we did one treble crochet in each stitch. So we'll just go one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way down until it's roughly at the waist, okay? So when we rejoin, we'll have this ruffle completed at the bottom, and then we'll move on to creating the straps of our tank top. So things are moving right along and it looks lovely, and I'm really liking this tonal quality I'm getting. Just working that last treble crochet of our ruffle rounds, and I'm gonna show you what we have in just a minute. And we're gonna close that with a slip stitch in that topmost chain where we began. Same thing as the other rounds. And then what you can do is cut the yarn. And then we're gonna fasten off with our yarn. Now if we flip our tank top around, we have our beautiful ruffles. You can see them, they look gorgeous. They're nice and soft, everything looks lovely. Now I did of our alternating stitch sequence where we did two trebles in each stitch and then one treble in each stitch and then two and we alternated that. Um, I did six rows of that total. So you can see here, it created some very lovely ruffles. 
We are now ready to add some straps to our tank top. It's really exciting. All right, so we're gonna need our hook, some scissors, four stitch markers. If you don't have stitch markers, just use some scrap yarn, it's totally fine. And then um, I pre-measured the size strap that I wanted and I used a scrap piece of yarn. This is sort of like um, a little ruler with some scrap yarn, but I um, put it on my dress form, which is how I sized mine. Um, and I just took a scrap piece of yarn and I cut it to fit. So this is gonna be something I'm gonna keep handy because this is the length. Uh, we're gonna attach it up here. And this is the length I'm gonna make my strap and then later we're gonna sew it to the back. So what we wanna do now is get some stitch markers on here. We're gonna have uh, two in the front here for the front of our straps and two in the front over here. We don't need to put them in the back because what we're gonna do is just get a strap started with the same stitches so it looks uh, very, uh, has like a flow to it with the stitches. And then we're just gonna use our little uh, yarn marker here to just let them go till they're this long, basically, okay? So I like to kind of eyeball it. Um, you can measure, you can double check with your measuring tape and see how far apart they're gonna be. Okay, the one thing you do want to count though is just to make sure the same number of stitches are in between your stitch markers. So you can eye them up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna kind of like, uh, like lay them where I want them to be. But just make sure there's the same number of stitches in between this one as in between this one, okay? Okay, so this is where you can decide how wide you want them to be. So I'm gonna put my first stitch marker here. Now if you remember, this is where our starting chain is. So they're not gonna look like, if we go down to the bottom of our ruffle, they're not gonna quite look like stitches, like little Vs. They're gonna look a little bit different, but that's okay. All right, and then I wanna make sure I have the same number of stitches in between. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna put it after that eighth stitch, okay? I'm just gonna fasten it on there like that, okay? Now, let's eyeball the next one. Now you can measure, it's up to you. Okay, just make sure there's the same number, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you can put it in just after that one. Okay, so we're going to just repeat the same thing on both sides. So just grab your yarn and your hook now, and right where you have that stitch marker, insert it into that stitch, hook the new yarn on, bring up a loop, and we're just gonna tie that yarn right on, okay? So just tie it right on. We'll worry about all the ends later. We're not gonna worry about that now. And then we can kind of get that end out of the way. Reinsert your hook into that stitch, bring up a loop, and we're gonna chain two, okay? That's gonna count as one of our half double crochets. We're gonna do half double crochets again for this. Now go into the next stitch. Now, I'm calling these stitches, they are gonna be kind of in between these little stitches that you see. This is uh, the starting chain, so it will look a little different than a regular stitch. But let me just zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about here. So, just go into that next opening, we're just gonna call it openings, and wrap yarn around hook, insert it in between, see how I'm going in between? It, it's the starting chain, so it looks a little bit different. Bring up a loop, Yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops, okay? Go in between the next two, work a half double crochet, half double crochet all the way across, and it'll look very similar. We're just uh, trying to get these in the right spot right now. Okay, we're just kind of going in between. Okay, and we're just gonna go all the way across until we get to our next stitch marker. Okay, now here we are, we're at our stitch marker, so go ahead and work one in there too, okay? Until you get to that stitch marker. And we have established the foundation of our strap. Now I made mine a little bit wide just because um, it'll make it nice and sturdy. You can make yours thinner or wider, it's up to you. Now we're gonna chain two, and we're gonna turn our work. These are gonna be worked flat. And you're gonna work a half double crochet into that first stitch and every stitch across. And we're just gonna do this for the whole strap. So let's just go through this first row here. Half double crochet in every stitch all the way across here. 
The stitches are a little bit easier to see now because they're actually stitches. We're not working in that starting chain. But if you just go in between, like I showed you, it'll be fine. Okay, and then work it in that last stitch there that you see. And then what you're gonna do is just keep repeating this row over and over and over again until you have your um, marker here, our little yarn marker that we created. So you'll just put it at the base where those stitch markers are and you'll just keep working half double crochets until it's as long as your piece of yarn, okay? Then what you're gonna do is, let me just flip this over so you can see. You're gonna do this, you're gonna um, finish that strap then you're gonna hop over to here, and what we just did over here, you're gonna repeat in between these two stitch markers. So if you need to back up the video and watch it again after you've done the first strap, feel free to do that. Okay, so work your two straps, and then when we rejoin, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our piece over, and we're gonna sew it to the back to attach them. Okay, we're just working our last stitch of our strap. And I went ahead and did both straps because they're done the same. So what we're going to do now is uh, for our strap, you're going to leave a nice long tail because we are going to sew it on to the back of it to uh, stitch it into place. So we're going to cut the yarn leaving a nice long tail and then wrap the yarn around the hook and bring that tail through your loop to fasten off. Now I found the, the best way was to just lay it flat and then fold it right in half to the back, grab your tail. Now I'm gonna cut, I left myself lots of extra space. I'm gonna just cut a little bit of this excess off just to make it a little bit easier to work with. You always wanna leave yourself a little more than not enough, okay? And then we're just gonna thread our tapestry needle. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the tank top where we have it marked. Actually, it might be easier to just swivel it. We're gonna go up in there like this, because we want the seam to be as invisible as possible, okay? So I'm gonna hold it like a sandwich, sort of. I'm just gonna bring that through as well. And then we're just gonna seam it together, okay? So grab your tail, and we're just gonna whip stitch it. So all that is, is we're just gonna work like a spiral through both layers, you wanna go through two loops of each layer to create your seam. And we're just, I just quickly turned this inside out so it would be a little bit more invisible. Um, if you do that on the outside, you might have like a, a ridge that doesn't look as nice, okay? So you wanna make sure you go through both layers and, you know, work it consistently across. So whatever two loops that you're using for yours you wanna make sure you do the same thing all the way across for the most consistent look, okay? And then what we're gonna do, when we get to the edge here, before we take our tapestry needle out, what we're gonna do is weave that end in right then and there. So what you wanna do is bring it almost all the way through, send it through that loop, and pull it nice and tight, and then we're going to just send our tail through some of these stitches along the inside. Try not to get them on the outside. Whoops, because that will will show, you know, when you flip it right side out again, okay? And once your ends are in, you're just going to snip that, okay? Now you're just gonna repeat that for the other side as well. Okay, so our straps are all stitched up. Now let me just turn this right side out again. So we have some lovely little straps now. Super easy, they were very easy to do. Um, but we have a lot of ends to take care of. Also, we can now remove our stitch markers because our straps are completely done and we don't need any kind of marker or reference now. So the next thing you'll wanna do is just finish weaving in your ends. So our ends are all woven in and it looks absolutely beautiful. I think the yarn just complements it so much. We've done the bodice, the straps, these gorgeous ruffles. So our strawberry cream peplum tank is complete. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.